Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present us and Tonight, Autolite brings you the story of a woman who finds a letter warning of death and has only three hours to deliver it. A transcribed tale we call The Death Parade, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. Before our play begins, here is a word about Autolite from our good friend, Harlow Wilcox. Hi, Harlow. You got the time? Always have the time to discuss those great ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, Hap. Uh, no, the time of day. Day or night, those matchless marvels designed by Autolite ignition engineers are magic for merry motoring. Harlow, I'd like to know what time it is. Oh, oh, uh, ten to one. Ten to one? Yeah. And the one that when you replace worn-out spark plugs in your car with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, you'll get smoother performance, quick start, gas saving. Oh, three o'clock. Then your watch is working. With all the precision of Autolite spark plugs, Hap. Why, they're designed by the same Autolite engineers who design the complete ignition system for many leading makes of our finest cars. And that's why Autolite spark plugs are world famous for quality and dependability. Yeah. And now, with the death parade and the performance of Miss Agnes Moorhead, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. The parade, eh? I'll say. Something about a parade. Yeah, you can say that again. Uh, well, I guess it's all over. Sure has been a nice day for it. Yeah. Not a cloud in the... Hey, hey, look. Up there on the roof. Where? The Benson building. Hey, look out! Look out! She's gonna fall! She's gonna fall! Go back! Go back! No! 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 <laughs> All right, now, Miss Johnson, let's try and talk about this. This girl fell or was pushed off a roof this morning. You say you were the only other person there at the time. I was. I told you. Oh, what do you mean, push? You think that I... Oh, can you? I, oh, I, I know you. you're upset. Uh, just take it easy. You're upset? I'm nearly out of my mind. I don't see how you can expect me to tell you anything. First you accuse me and not... How can you believe in me so unfeeling? All I was trying to do was just... Oh, we freezing in here. You've no right to keep me... Here, a try some it. coffee. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> now... You told us you know something about this, uh, accident. Something more than we already know. Yes, I do, Lieutenant. I, I mean, it never would have happened, don't you see? Oh, sure, sure. Well, come on, Donna. Yeah, yeah, this will help. Well, I'm so nervous. I just... Oh, oh, it's still... Oh, that's all right. We'll clean it up later. That's how it started. That's how it started this morning, just like that. The coffee, that... Poor girl wouldn't have died if the coffee hadn't spilled. That's just how it started. My name's Ellen Johnson. Oh, I told you that. I work at the Farnsworth Chemical Plant. For 12 years I've been there and never missed an hour of work. That is, until today. It's so unnecessary. That horrible, rude little man. He was the one. I'm very precise about my daily habits. Very. When you live alone, you arrange things that way. In the morning, I get up and allow myself time to take coffee and toast at the cafe on the corner. I've always disliked cooking in the morning. I leave the cafe at 8.15 precisely in order to be at my desk exactly at 9. Well, this morning it was the same. It was just the same, except that horrible man. He was just awful. As I sat at the counter, you know, I could feel him there. He was two seats away, thin and dark, making a nasty noise as he drank his coffee. It was all his fault. Are you going to see the parade this afternoon, miss? I'm afraid I'll be working. Too bad. Could be good for business. I imagine so. Anything else? Hey. No, thank you. Hey, you. 25. Mm -hmm. Coffee and toast, right? Yeah, that's right. Hey, you. Thanks. Pass the sugar, will Good you? morning. See you tomorrow. Hey, what's the matter? I asked for the sugar. You can't pass it? I beg your pardon. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, why, look at that! You deliberately spilled that coffee all over oh, my... Oh, gee, ain't that oh, a shame? What a clumsy. Gee, am I sorry. He wasn't. He wasn't in the least sorry. He'd done it on purpose. On purpose. I was wearing a gray silk dress and it's probably ruined. 
He just stood there and wiped with the same little napkin, smiling, dirty, crooked teeth. I pushed him away and I walked out. I knew I was going to be late because I had to change, so I went home again. But if I hadn't gone home, this awful thing might never have happened. <laughs> It took me 15 minutes to get back to the apartment, change my dress, and leave again for the office. Well, I'd walked three blocks when I saw the letter. It was lying on the pavement in front of an apartment house. It was unsealed and addressed simply to Miss Sheila Mannix. No house number or street. Dear Sheila Mannix, you don't know me. I just got into the city. It doesn't matter who I am, but this is a warning. Believe me, you better take notice. Jack's got it in for you. I stopped reading. There was some more, but I didn't want to go on. It frightened me a little, and, well, I'm not one to pry into other people's business, but this, this wasn't prying, really. It, it wasn't. The letter was important. Whoever had written it must have forgotten to put the address on it, and it's fallen out of their pocket. Oh, I made up my mind then. I would go into the apartment house. It wasn't possible that the writer lived there, and on his way out had dropped it. Oh, janitor. Here. Yeah? Are you the janitor? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. We've got no vacancy. No, I don't want... Uh, look, this letter, it's not addressed. Do you know the handwriting? Mm, I thought maybe... No, nobody might... by that name living here. Oh, I didn't ask you that. All I want you to do is to tell me if you recognize the handwriting. It might belong to someone living here. Well, how come you opened it? Well, it's lying on the pavement outside. Well, give it to the mailman. It's important. I, I mean, what's in the letter is important. I, I think she ought to get it. So the post office will forward it. Well, can't you see? There's no address. How can they forward it? How stupid. Listen, you don't have to get nasty. Well, I told you, she don't live here no more. I'm sorry. Who doesn't live here anymore? Mannix. She had 2A about uh, six months ago. She's the Mannix lived here? Uh, where did she move to? Can you tell me? No forwarding address. But I must find her. I'm sorry, lady. I can't help. <laughs> Then I thought of the police. I should have told them about the letter, but I didn't. I, I didn't know what else was in it then. So I went back to my own apartment, and I looked through the telephone book. There were two Sheila Mannixes listed. The first lived on Maple Street, and the second on South Tower. I rang the Maple number first. Sheila Maddox speaking. Mrs. Sheila Maddox, who's oh, this? My name is Ellen Johnson, and I found a letter this morning addressed to Sheila Maddox. Oh, sure. I, I, well, I thought it was important, and I wanted to make sure it got to the right party. Who is it from? Well, that's it. I don't know. Well, why don't you open it? Well, I have, uh, but I only read a few lines. Oh. Do you know someone named Jack? Uh, Jack? Yeah, I have a nephew. Well, then perhaps but maybe... But he's in Colorado, though. Well, it's seems to be some sort of a warning. Warning? Yes. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, the letter says that Jack oh, no. has got it in for you. It's a, well, a warning from... Oh, I'm afraid the letter isn't for me. My Jack is ten years old. Oh. Oh, well, I'm sorry to trouble you. It's all right. Goodbye. As I hung up, I, I looked at my watch. It was nine o'clock. There was my job, but I just had... The second Sheila Mannix listed in the directory lived on South Tower. I dialed the number, and I waited. <sighs> I got the letter out of my purse and read it. This time I read all of it. Dear Sheila Mannix, you don't know me. I just got into the city. It doesn't matter who I am, but this is a warning. Believe me, you better take notice. Jack's got it in for you. He was drunk one night and told me about it. Somebody you knew pretty well died last year. He didn't fall off that building. He was pushed, and Jack did it. He said he was going to get you, too. I would have told the police, but they'd start to get nosy about me. Jack's on his way here, and from the way he talks, he better not find you around. He talked crazy about a parade. The corner of Maine and Thomas, and 12 o'clock. That's what he's going to do with a friend. I sat there holding a piece of paper that carried a death warning for a woman I'd never seen, and I knew where and when she was going to be killed. Auto life.
Tonight is bringing you Miss Agnes Moorhead in The Death Parade. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. The second Sheila Mannix is addressed with 317 South Tower Street. I got my car out, and I drove there. It must have been nearly a quarter to ten when I drew up outside. It was an old rooming house. Oh, hurry up. Come on, come on, come on. I... Uh, what do you want? I'm very sorry to trouble you. Uh, is, is your name... You have to talk louder. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I, uh, I wonder if you could tell me... Um, is your name Sheila Mannix? No, it's not. But the, fo the, the phone book has a Sheila Mannix listed at this address. Oh, it's her phone. She pays for it. Oh. I never have no cause to use it. She does live here then? Yes, she has a room upstairs. What's the matter? Well, does she work here? Is she at work now? Well, how should I know? I never ask her where she goes. What's she done? You mean you don't know where she works? Do you know where she lived before she moved here? No. You see, she never says nothing. She's quiet and keeps to herself. But where can I find her? It's important that I learn where she is right away. Well, she'll be home prompt by 7. She oh. always is, you know. You come back then if you got to see well, her. Well, 7 will be too late. I've got to find her now before 12. There ain't no use shouting at me. Well, I, I can't tell you no more than I already have. I sorry. don't know nothing about I'm Gina sorry. Night. Good morning. <laughs> Now, I knew that I'd wasted far too much time. I had to call the police. There was a drugstore in the corner, and I <laughs> ran down the block to it. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, do you have a phone? Uh, one over there, but it's, it's out of order. Oh, then I, uh, could I use yours? It's an emergency. I'm sorry, I don't have a private I phone. I have to call the police. I've never been mixed up in anything like this before. It's a letter I found this morning, a warning about somebody being killed. Oh, uh, there's a phone in the next door. You can use that. Uh, maybe, maybe you know her. She lives down the block. Who? Sheila Mannix. She's the one. At least I think so. Mannix? Sure, uh -huh. sure. She comes in often to have a prescription filled. Very nice young woman. Do you know anything about her? I mean, where she works? I've got to find her right away. No, I... Please, it's urgent. I asked her landlady. She didn't know. Well, it, it seems to me she did mention it once. Think, but, uh... you must think, please. Well, now, uh, it was just the other day we were chatting while I filled her prescription. She said something about... Was it a restaurant? A uh, cashier, maybe? No, no. Department store, elevator operator? Cat, clothes, shoes, no. uh, telephone operator, maybe? No, no, doesn't hit. I, I'm You're sorry. You're not thinking. Well, Ma'am, think... if, if, if I could help you, I would, but... Oh, my... Friends in the neighborhood. Somebody you might know. No, never mentioned them. Oh, can't you remember? Maybe, maybe she worked in an office, huh? Uh, maybe. I'm, I'm, excuse me a moment, sir. Customer, oh. you, you better go next door and call the police. But can't you remember? Look, I, I'll, I'll be back. Uh, maybe a chorus girl. Does she work in a bookstore? Oh, well, I can't wait. I'll come back after I've called. Oh, a bar. What will they think? A woman going into a bar? To... Hey, ma'am. Huh? Wait a minute. Look, I remember. Oh. You said bookstore. It's a book company. Simmons Book and Stationery Corporation. Oh, that was thank Simmons you. Book thank and Stationery Corporation. Thank you. It's on name. Yes, I know the place. Thank you very much. Simmons Book and Stationery. Why I had been there dozens of times. She might even have waited on me. I looked at my watch at 10.30. I really meant to call the police from the bar, but I didn't know how long it would take to explain. And even then, they might not investigate without seeing the letter first. I saw the corner of Maine and Thomas, the parade, and 12 o'clock, an hour and a half. I ran to get my car. I, I knew that once I found Sheila Mannix and gave her the warning, she'd be safe. Good morning. May I help you? Yes, please. I'd like to speak to Miss Mannix, Miss Sheila Mannix. I understand that she works here. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, is there anything I can help you with? No, no, thank you. It, it's personal. Oh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, one minute, please. Oh, I'd found her, and it was going to be all right now. While I waited, I looked at the books lining the walls. I was standing in front of the mystery station. You know the first title that caught my eye was Time for a Murder? I'm very sorry, ma'am, but one of the other girls tells me that Miss Mannix had an appointment. She's not here. Well, I'm sorry. Now, perhaps I... But where did she go? Let me talk to the girl. Well, I think to the doctor. What doctor? Where? When did she leave? Well, if you'll wait here, I'll find out for you. 